Chapter 30 A Lot of Slimy Slivering Stop! Stop right there! The bookworm screamed at us as he ran. You can't get away! I shut Bell me with both hands. Down, boy! Get down! Betty and Wendell went running to the trees. I tried to run, but Bellamy pawed at my legs. He just didn't get it. He thought it was a game. Stop, and I won't hurt you, the bookworm screamed. Bellamy suddenly dropped to all fours. The dog turned away from me. He spun toward the screaming man and uttered a long, low growl. Then he lowered his head and took off, raised toward the bookworm. Billy, run! I heard window shout. But I had my eyes on Bellamy. Snarling angrily, the big dog leaped onto the bookworm. Bellamy snapped at his jaws at the thief's wrist. The bookworm fell backward onto the grass. Barking and growling, Bellamy tore at the sleeve of the man's shirt. To my surprise, the bookworm didn't move from the ground. Had he hit his head on something? I didn't wait to see. I turned, lowered my shoulder like a football running back, and headed for Wendell and my sister. I could hear Bellamy barking beyond the trees. And then I heard the bookworm shouting at him. The thief was back in action. We have to hide, Window said. We don't want him to get to the book. Let's hide and wait for him to go past. He turned in a full circle, his eyes moving over the ground and trees. Under the tangled tree limbs, it was blacker than night. I hugged myself against the chill of the wind. Hey, look, I said, pointing just beyond a clump of weeds. The amount of dirt over there, we can hide behind it. Yes, let's go, Window said. Hurry, get behind it. The mound will hide us, and we can watch from there. We scampered toward the low dirt hill and dropped down on our stomachs behind it. Stay low, Window whispered. He won't be able to see us if we keep low. I heard the crunch of the thief's running footsteps. He was in the forest now, moving between the trees. Close. So close. I lowered myself and tried to dig myself into the dirt. Oh, wait, I murmured. Wait. Oh, no. No! The mound was moving. Not dirt, Betty squealed. Whoa, not dirt! I raised myself to my knees. My stomach lurched as I realized what we were lying on top of. Worms. An enormous, sticky mountain of huge, wet worms. I started to gag as worms slivered over my body, my face. Fat purple worms clung to my arms, my shoulders, and the front of my shirt. Stay down. Stay down. He'll see you, Window whispered loudly. But my skin itched so hard, I had to brush the worms off my face. There were worms slivering down my neck, down the front of my shirt. Betty was groaning. Sick. Oh, sick. She pulled two fat worms from her hair and tossed it back on the pile. I swapped the worm from behind my ear. <sighs> Stay down. The bookworm is coming, Window cried in a loud whisper. Worms crawled and slivered over him, but he didn't seem bothered by them. He didn't move from the mound. I, I can't stand it, my sister shrieked. She jumped to her feet. Swept the worms off her arms, pulling it from her shirt. Get down! Betty, get down! I cried. I grabbed her arm. I tried to tuck her back down. Too late. Too late. The bookworm saw her.